What is up music lovers? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and you saw the title of this video, you know what this is. Today we are going to be ranking every single Metallica album from S tier to D and F tier. And this is going to be pretty interesting I think because honestly Metallica has never been one of my favorite bands. Don't get me wrong, I love those first few albums. But overall, if I had to rank all my favorite bands, Metallica would probably be around B tier. But I think that might give me a, not unique, but a more objective perspective. And we're going to be doing things a little bit differently here. Usually I would start from the first album, go up to the last album. I'm doing it the opposite because uh, we all know it's about those first five albums. And before we get into it, if you like rock, heavy metal, progressive rock, any kind of guitar driven music, please go ahead, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button. All that YouTube stuff, I know it's a cliche to ask, but it really does help the channel grow, so thank you in advance for that. And with all that out of the way, let's get into the first album we'll be ranking, which is their latest release, 72 Seasons. And I'm going to put this one smack dab in the middle, although not B, C, we got that D there. Um, it's not bad. But there's also very little that really grabs me on this album. Performances are really energetic and the band sounds like they're having fun. The production is really good. Uh, it sounds crisp and clear. You can also really hear a lot of the new wave of British heavy metal influences on this album. Songs like Lux Eterna. They sound very reminiscent of Tigers of Pantang and Diamond Head and, you know, all the early bands that Metallica was inspired by. There are also some moments and some songs on this album that feel reminiscent of Black Sabbath, very doomy, very uh, slow and plodding, which is cool, but maybe it's just also kind of where I'm at in my life, but the album itself as a whole just kind of feels too repetitive, a little bit too long. Um, you Must Burn is a cool track, and there's no songs on this album that I would say are outright terrible. But there's also very little that really like stands out to me. Okay, and coming up next is Hardwired to Self-Destruct, released in 2016. I'm also going to put this pretty middle of the road for their discography. I'm going to put it a little bit above 72 seasons and C tier, just because it has a bit more bite to it in the vocals and the riffs than 72 seasons does. You also have some cool Iron Maiden-esque harmonies on songs like Moth to Flame, and the theme of uh, self-destructive tendencies is a cool idea as well. The title track is really thrashy, and I think that this is the best guitar tone out of any Metallica album from the 2000s. So again, it's not a bad album, but it's also just an album that doesn't really grab me that I'm not super inspired by. But, talking about an album that definitely gets your attention, coming up next is Lulu. And what can I say about Lulu other than I am the table? S tier. No, of course I'm fucking with you. I'm going to put Lulu down here. It doesn't feel right to have it in D or F tier, so I'm just going to say So there we go. If I do have some serious notes on this album, I would say that it's kind of an example of why it's easy to write cool riffs, but it's also difficult to make those cool riffs into good songs. Lou Reed's voice doesn't really fit with Metallica, Metallica's music doesn't fit with Lou Reed. I'm not sure exactly what they were thinking with this album, but I do respect them for just going out and doing it. There is something that's really respectable about that and admirable. But at the same time, that doesn't make it good. And I do think at the time, the reaction of this album was a bit <sighs> over-the-top negative. You know, if you don't like something very much, you don't need to listen to it, and you definitely don't need to send threats to Lou Reed. <laughs> like I said, it is in the rank of I am the table. It's not D tier, not F tier. It's Lulu. It is the table. Okay, and coming up next, we have Death Magnetic. Definitely the best of the Metallic albums released in the 2000s. I'm gonna put it in B tier. The production on this album is pretty rough, especially when compared to 72 Seasons or Hardwired to Self-Destruct, but this album feels more like an actual Metallica album than these two do to me. This is also the first of the albums that we're talking about that I feel like there's not really any bad songs on it. I don't think there's any songs that are like their best that they've ever done, but all the songs on the album are like solid. Death Magnetic has always kind of reminded me of And Justice For All in that the production's really raw, but the songwriting's pretty solid. And even though maybe it's a little bit longer than it should be, it doesn't hamper the album as a whole. 
some of the deeper cuts on the album, like All Nightmare Long or Cyanide, The Judas Kiss, they're all really good. And this album maybe captures a little bit of that Metallica energy from the early days when they really felt like they had something to prove. And the reason that they had something to prove was because of uh, this album, which, yeah, I'll just put it right in F tier, right? Eh. Will it, where will it go? Where, eh. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll put it below Lulu. All the complaints that Saint Anger gets, it deserves the lack of guitar solos, the vocal delivery, the snare sound, which is just a meme at this point, the lyrics, but I feel like fundamentally there are some good ideas on this album. There's albums when I'm ranking them that I feel as though there's a lot of good moments on them, but they just go on for too long and there's too much filler and therefore my view of them as an album is a negative one. And that's kind of what you can say about Saint Anger, except you can just apply that to every single song on this freaking album. Saint Anger has moments that if you were just to listen to them by themselves, like, oh, this is cool. The, the chorus to the title track is kind of cool. Some of the riffs are really heavy. But then, they just keep going on and on and on. And they don't change. And the production's really bad. And there's so many weird choices with vocal deliveries on this album. And there's so many just really stupid lyrics. Why on earth is the average runtime of a song on this album seven and a half minutes? I love long songs. Hallowed Be Thy Name, progressive rock, progressive metal, but if you're gonna do that, you need to make sure that you have enough musical ideas to justify that long of a song. <laughs> you can have a 25 minute long song if it's good, but the songs here just kind of repeat the same riffs over and over again. And there's this attitude of them taking themselves way too seriously on this album. I'm coming down really hard on Saint Anger, and uh, I normally wouldn't, because I normally wouldn't listen to it, especially not in its entirety. Uh, but like I said, I listened to all of Metallica's albums in preparation for this video over the last day or two, and uh, Saint Anger was one of the last ones I listened to, so I still have a bit of uh, discomfort from that, so... Yeah. But before I go on to rank another album, I will say, no matter how bad an album is that you hear, and no matter how much you don't like the songs, no matter how bad the production is, it is a hundred thousand times harder to make an album than it is to make a video where I'm sitting on my ass criticizing that album, so they sold four million copies, so hats off to them. Anyway, rant over. <laughs> I usually don't like to be so negative, but uh, Saint Anger really brought out the anger in me. I'm madly in anger with you saying anger. Jesus Christ, I can't believe I just said that. Anyway, I'm going to skip over Garage Days Revisit It or Garage Inc. because just kind of like a collection of covers. It's fine. Uh, but coming up next is Reload. And I'm going to put it down in D slash F tier again. Part of me wants to almost put this album below Saint Anger and even below Lulu because... Reload just kind of sounds boring, where Lulu and Saint Anger at least have things that you can be amazed by and interested by. And while we're doing Reload, I guess I should rank Load as well, and uh, I'll just kind of put Load bottom of C tier, I guess. You know, like Reload D, Load very low C. These two albums are the first time that Metallica was no longer leading the charge no longer really on like the cutting edge. You could argue they weren't on the cutting edge with the Black Album, but they were at least doing something that was kind of bold and kind of like on the front lines of what was happening with the music industry. And with this, it just feels like they're at a loss. It's the beginning of like the twangy country rockabilly Metallica, you know, like ain't my bitch mama said. Like, it, <laughs> I don't know, it just, it feels off. And these albums are also albums where the aesthetics of them got the band a lot of flack. But I don't care if you're dressing like Bono or you have short hair. If the music you're making is good, then by all means, go ahead and do it. But this doesn't really feel like it's a genuine attempt to do something bold. It just kind of feels like they're looking at the music scene around them and being like, oh, I guess we'll do this, but we're not super passionate about it. But I don't know, but we're kind of embarrassed because we've gotten so big now that we don't want to be a metal band. I don't know. It's just weird. It's all over the place. 
just for king nothing, load gets a higher rank than reload. I don't know. I just don't have much to say about either album, unfortunately. They're just kind of... They exist. I feel kind of bad being so ambivalent about these albums. Not just Load and Reload, but all the albums thus far that I've been talking about. But that's okay, because we're finally going to start talking about the first five Metallic albums. And this is where I'm reminded of, oh yeah, this band kicks ass. And coming up first is the Black Album, Metallica, and boom, A tier. Of course, you have all the hits like Enter Sandman, Sad But True, The Unforgiven, Wherever I May Roam, but... I think all the deep cuts on this album are pretty incredible, too. Through the Never of Wolf and Man, The God That Failed. Uh, My Friend of Misery is a great song about a demagogue. Uh, Holier Than Thou is amazing. And even the hits on this album, like Nothing Else Matters or Sad But True or Enter Sandman, they have not yet, for me personally, reached the level where some other bands reach with their hits, where it's like I can't even listen to them. I probably wouldn't put them on, if I had the choice between them or some other songs from this album, but if I do hear them or if I am listening to the album from beginning to end, I'm never like, oh, skip this song. The production is amazing. They have someone, again, with Bob Rock in the room, really challenging them, really making them work and do the rewrites that it takes to make great music. Like, with any art, it's not the first draft that is what you have to put out. It's the third or fourth or fifth draft, and... uh this album, they just did a really solid job from beginning to end, and they sold, what, 16 million copies? So this album is the face of metal for a lot of people who are not more in the weeds with this. So I think it's a good thing, because I, I feel as though, although this might not be the greatest metal album of all time, it's a good introduction to the genre. Okay, and coming up next is And Justice For All, and once again, I'm going to put it up in A tier, just above the Black Album. This is another absolute banger. This album probably has Hetfield's most vicious vocal performance. There's a real venom and a real bite and a real snarl to every vocal line he spits out. And whenever someone just says that Lars is a crappy drummer, I always think of songs like Dyer's Eve or Eye of the Beholder or And Justice For All or One, Blackened as well. Um, and that was something I think I forgot to say about the album 72 Seasons and Hardwired to Self-Destruct. Lars has some pretty good drum performances on those albums. And yes, of course, there is the lack of bass and the flaws in the production, but, you know, I'm willing to overlook stuff like that if the songs are good, and on this album, the songs are all really good. And coming up next, we have our first S tier, because what else would it be? Master of Puppets, boom, S tier. I mean, what can I say about this album? It's Master of Puppets. Metallica, when they're concise, when they're just to the point and they know that this album needs to be 40 45 minutes long but every single second of it needs to really grab your attention and kick complete and total ass that's when they're at their best i think eight songs they're all perfect my two personal favorites are probably orion and then damage inc but it's really hard to tell because that last half of this album is incredible with disposable heroes and leper messiah the worst song on this album is probably the thing that should not be and even that song's a real banger with some super heavy riffage in it. Master of Puppets is really just perfection of making sure that every single song earns its place on that record. And as much as I love Master of Puppets, there is one album that for me is just a little bit better, and that's the second album by Metallica, Ride the Lightning. But honestly, it's pretty neck and neck. I don't know if I can actually explain why I love Ride the Lightning more than Master of Puppets, but I think it just has something to do with the sound of the album, the energy on it, the fact that it is such a massive leap forward when compared to their debut. I love the deep cuts like Trapped Under Ice. I love Escape. I know for some reason James Hetfield hates that song, but I think it's a good one. And Fight Fire With Fire, the title track, which is probably my favorite Metallica song of all time. And uh, Fade to Black, of course, For Whom the Bell Tolls. Never begrudge anyone for choosing Master of Puppets over Ride the Lightning. They're really neck and neck, but for me personally, Ride the Lightning has always just had a really special place in my heart ever since I first heard it, and every time I re-listen to it, it just has an extra X factor. One thing that I will say about Master of Puppets versus Ride the Lightning is that the instrumental track Orion on Master of Puppets, I do like a lot better than The Call of Cthulhu, but I mean, look, 
I think it's pretty unanimous that these are Metallica's two best albums, right? It is sort of a toss-up, but for me, Ride the Lightning's number one. If you prefer Master of Puppets, I totally get it. Which one do you prefer, Master of Puppets or Ride the Lightning? Let me know. Okay, and then the last album will be ranking Kill 'Em All. And honestly, this might be a little bit of a hot take. I'm not sure. Probably not, but I'm going to put it in B tier. Above Death Magnetic for sure, but certainly below the Black Album. This album has an energy to it that's unlike any other album Metallica ever put out. It's very reminiscent of bands like Raven and Venom, Tigers of Pantang, Diamond Head, and there is like a no-holds-barred energy to the performance and almost like a frantic quality. Not frantic, the tick, 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 tock, tick, 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 tock frantic, but you know, just kind of like unhinged, like they're all so excited to be in the studio that they're just like really struggling to like hold it together because they're just so pumped. And I don't think there's a bad song on this album. I enjoy them all and over more Seek and Destroy Metal Militia. I like the extended solo and the Four Horsemen and I really enjoy how it's double tracked with two guitar solos going on at the same time because we've had one guitar solo, yes, but what about second guitar solos? <laughs> and, uh, it does feel like a nice homage to Black Sabbath. Maybe the reason why it's down in B tier for me is because where Ride the Lightning, Master of Puppets, and even And Justice for All and the Black Album feel very timeless, Kill 'Em All sounds very of the era. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, I love like the underground 1980s metal sound. There's so many cool, obscure bands that you can keep going and finding new albums and new songs and just being like, oh, this is, this is really cool. But there's something to be said about a band that is able to be in a time and place and still write music that sounds just as fresh 30, 40 years later. And the performances on Kill 'Em All are also a bit rushed, it being their first album and how excited they were and also the fact that they were under pretty tight time constraints and budget. Uh, I've read interviews where Kirk Hammett says he listens back to a lot of his solos on this album and he's just like, ugh, the bends, they're so out of tune, I wish I could have I wish I could have re-recorded them, but we just didn't have time. So I do sort of admire that energy, but I would much rather listen to the more seasoned, more relaxed, more professional sound from these albums here. But all these albums took way more effort to make them than it does to sit here and talk about them, so I am glad that they exist. But that's my list. St. Anger at the bottom with I Am The Table, and then Ride the Lightning up at number one with Master of Puppets. I feel as though this is probably like a standard way of looking at the Metallica albums. As I said in the beginning of this video, Metallica is not one of my favorite bands, even though they have been massively influential to me. Uh, there's a lot of other bands that I prefer to listen to. So if you are a super diehard Metallica fan and you love all of these albums, please tell me why I'm wrong or, <laughs> or tell me how you would rank these albums. Do you agree with me what I said about Lulu, where there are some good riffs on it? I feel bad because I feel as though I... I came down on St. Anger really hard, but like I said, I did just listen to all these albums back to back, and whew, yeah, St. Anger was uh, a bit rough to get through, 76 minutes, and it was, uh, yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video, and if you liked it, please comment, like, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. It's a cliche to ask, but it really does help the channel grow, and uh, I hope to see you at the next video. Peace.